Welcome to this second tutorial on OpenCV. You'll need for this lesson, IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. You're going to need to install something like Notepad++ or uh, PyCharm. There are several others, but PyCharm is one of the most recommended. So what you want to do is you want to go to www.jetbrains.com in download the PyCharm Community Edition. That is a free edition for everyone. You'll do, download that, and then you, of course, you'll pick the, the Windows version if you're running Windows, and that's what we're using. So next, we're going to go back to um, OpenCV, the tutorial. We're going to click on we're going to go go open CV. We're going to go to tutorials. We're going to go to the core functionality, core module, and uh, map the basic image container. And then we're going to scroll down to about middle of the page. And we're going to click on load, modify, and save an image tutorial. And then it says it's been moved to getting started with images. So we're going to click on that. And we're going to scroll down and click on the Python source code. So now we're going to copy this, and we're going to run PyCharm. I'm going to assume you have PyCharm installed. If you haven't seen the explanation, you'll have to go back to lesson one. What we want to do is, um, while the PyCharm is loading up, we Google Starry Night Image Free and go to Images. And we're going to, there's, um, picks a bay. Um, we're going to download from there. So here we're going to click on the image and do save it. We want save an image as JPEG. Okay. So we're going to download it. Now I downloaded the desktop. We want to call the file name starry underscore night. So that's what we need to rename it is starry night. Next, we're going to and go into PyCharm. What you want to do, drop the file you just stored on your desktop and that you renamed starry.jpg. You want to drop it in your Python library. And so now you can see I dropped it from the desktop. I just dragged it from the desktop and the uh, Python project seven. So now what I did was I changed the line of code. So, so here was our original. So I'm going to copy the code from OpenCV. So here's the code from OpenCV. So we're going to just copy it, hitting control C. And now we're going to go to PyCharm and we're going to paste it in. So what we want to do is we want to modify this line here. Just stay starry night.jpg because we dropped it in our Python project. So now we're going to hit the run button, F7. So we're testing that OpenCV is working. Import CV2 as CV. So we're successfully imported OpenCV. So sometimes in PyCharm, you have to go down to Python packages. And under Python packages, you have to select the package you want to use. But in this case, it's running as it's supposed to. And well, here we go. Let's run it again. Now the image pops up. So we were successful getting the code to run. And there was a slight modification I just modified. I just dropped the file right into the uh, Python program, which is the easiest way, I think, to do it. I'm going to go back to uh, OpenCV. And but let's go back to tutorials. And let's look at the core functionality again and 
how to scan images, look up tables, and time measurement with OpenCV. Here we go. Um, how to scan images, look up tables, and time measurement with OpenCV. We'll answer, seek answers for the following questions. How do we go through each and every pixel of an image? How are OpenCV matrix values stored? How do we measure the performance of our algorithm? What are lookup tables and why use them? So here's the test case. Let us consider a simple color reduction method by using the unsigned char C in C++ type for matrix item storing. A channel pixel may have up to 256 different values. For a three channel images, we can allow the formation this can allow the formation of way too many colors, 16 million to be exact. Working with so many color shades may give a heavy blow to algorithm performance. However, sometimes it is enough to work with a lot less colors to get the same result. So how they get this 16 million, what they do, if you take out the calculator and you say, you have RGB, so 256 times 256 times 256 gives 16.7 million. So um, they just round to 16 million. So it's a multiplication. In this case, it is common that we make a color space reduction. This means we divide the color space current value with a new input end up with fewer colors. For instance, every value between 0 and 9 takes the new value 0. Every value between 10 and 19 takes the value 10, and so on. When you divide an UCAR unsigned character, aka values between 0 and 255, value with an int, an int value, the result will also be char. These values may only be char values. Therefore, any fraction will be rounded down. Taking advantage of this fact, the upper operation in the U char domain may be expressed using this math formula. A simple color reduction algorithm would consist of just pathing every pixel of an image matrix and applying this formula. It's worth noting that we do a divided multiply operation. These operations are bloody expensive for a system. It's possible, it's worth it avoiding them by using cheaper operations such as a few subtractions, addition, or in the best case, a simple assignment. Therefore, note we only have a limited number of input values for the upper operation. In case of the UCAR system, this is 256 to be exact. Therefore, for larger images, it would be wise to calculate all possible values beforehand and during the assignment, just to make the assignment by using a lookup table. Lookup tables are simple arrays having one or more dimensions that for a given input value variation holds the final output value. Its strength is that we do not need to make calculations. We just need to read the result. Our test program in the sample code below We'll do the following, read an image passed as a command line argument. It may be either color or grayscale and apply the reduction with a given command line argument integer value. In OpenCV at the moment, there are three major, major ways of going through an image pixel by pixel. To make things a little more interesting, we'll make the scanning of the image using each of the three methods and print out how long it took. You can download the full source code here or look it up in the sample directory of OpenCV at the CPP tutorial code for the core section. And basic usage is um, how to scan images, image name, .jpg, int value to reduce. So basically what they're doing is instead of doing a bunch of math, which is um, slows everything down, they, they're using a lookup table, which speeds up operations by making uh, doing a lookup instead of doing a calculation. Another issue is how do we measure time? Well, OpenCV offers two simple functions to achieve this, CV get tick count 
in CV get take frequency. The first number, the first returns the number of ticks on your system CPU from an event, from a certain event like since you booted your system. The second returns how many times your CPU emits a tick during a second. So measuring the amount of a lapse time between two operations is as easy as, and here's the code to do that. We learned about lookup tables and time measurement. So that's the time measurement portion. Uh, how is an image matrix stored in memory? Um, as you could already read in math, the, the basic image container tutorial, the size of the matrix depends on the color system. More accurately, it depends on the number of channels used. In the case of grayscale image, we have something like this. You know, we only have one channel. So for row zero, column zero, it's only one cell. For row zero, column one, it's only one cell. So if you think of this like Excel, um, you know, you, you can visualize it better. For multi-channel images, the columns contain as many sub-columns as the number of channels. For example, in the case of a RBGR color system, row zero, column zero is three cells. So in the grayscale, where it's just one cell, in the RGB, you have to multiply by three because it's three cells. No that the order of the channels is inverse, BGR instead of RGB. That's the convention OpenCV uses, um, blue, green, red, instead of red, green, blue. Because in many cases, the memory is large enough to store the rows in a successive fashion. The rows may follow one after another, creating a single long row. Because everything is in a single place, following one after another, this may help to speed up the scanning process, we use we can use CV mat is continuous function to ask the matrix if this is the case. In the next section is an example. So when it comes to performance, you can't beat the classic C style point pointer access. Therefore, the most efficient way we can recommend is recommend for making the assignment is to use the code below. Here we basically just acquire a pointer to the start of each row and go through it until it ends. In the special case that the matrix is stored in a continuous manner, we need only to request the pointer a single time and go all the way to the end. We need to look out for color images. We have three channels, so we need to pass through three times more items in each row. There is another way of this. The data member of a map object returns the pointer to the first row, first column. If the pointer is null, you, you have no valid input in that object. Checking this is the simplest method to check if your image loading was a success. In case the storage is continuous, we can use this to go through the whole data pointer. In the case of grayscale, it would look like this. You'll get the same result. However, the code is a lot harder to read. It gets even harder if you have some more advanced techniques there. Moreover, in practice, I've observed you'll get the same performance result as most of the modern compilers will probably make this small optimization trick automatically for you. The, um, the iterator save method. There's more methods. You have the iterator method. Then you have the on-the-fly calculation with referencing return. And then you have the LUT function. So basically, um, they talk about the differences in the methods. So as you can see, the LUT function is the fastest. Let's read about that. This is a bonus method of achieving lookup table modifications in an image the core function. In image processing, it is quite common that you want to modify all of a given image values to some other values. OpenCV provides a function for modifying image values. 
without the need to write the scanning logic of an image. We use the CV LUT function of the core module. First, we build a matrix type of the lookup table. So they're building here a matrix type of the lookup table. Finally, call the function i is our input image and j the output one. So la i comma lookup table comma j. The performance different difference for the best re result, compile the program and run it yourself. To make the differences more clear, I've they've used a quite large 2560 times 1600 image. The performance presented here is for color images. For more accurate value, they averaged the value they got from the call of the function for 100 times. So they did 100 uh, calls of the function. So they say, we conclude a couple of things. If possible, use the already made functions of OpenCV instead of reinventing these. The fastest way it turns out to be the LUT function, Third, um, as we noted. This is because the OpenCV library is multi-thread enabled via Intel thread, threaded building block. However, if you need to write a simple image scan, they prefer the pointer method. The iterator is a safe bet. However, it is quite slower. Using the on-the-fly references across method for the full scan, full image scan is the most costly in the debugging mode. So that that's the slowest. In the reference mode, it may beat the iterator approach or not. However, it surely sacrifices for this the safety trait of iterators. Finally, so there's a sample run of the program uh, posted on YouTube if you want to watch it. So the conclusion here is use the um, already made functions of OpenCV if you can use the LUT function. So we learned about how to scan images, lookup tables, and time measurement with OpenCV. This is just to give you some background. We're going to go back to the tutorials. And so the next one is mask operations on matrices. In the next tutorial, we'll, we'll go over mass operations on matrices. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching.